What's going on guys? Uh, welcome to Regular Expressions Made Easy Part 9. All right, in this video we're going to talk about non-capture groups as well as back referencing. These might sound like uh, difficult concepts but they're actually not that bad. So let's just get started. So let's go over what uh, capture groups are. So until now whenever we use groups our groups were considered capture groups. So captured in this case just means a, a group's regular expression result is either saved or outputted. So the result from a group's regular expression, so whatever is within this bracket, so this result is going to be either outputted or saved. So that's what a cap that's what a, a capture means. So a capturing group is either going to save the uh, the results of the group of the group's regular expression. So it's either going to save the results of the group's regular expression or it's going to uh, output it. So let's just go over a couple of examples to uh, further clarify this concept. So re.findAll. So as you know, findAll always outputs the uh, group's results. So it doesn't output the entire pattern. Um, if there's a group, it's always going to output the result of a group. So we've gone over this uh, in the previous videos, and those were all examples of a, a capturing group. So I'm going to run this again and it prints out a 4 and 9. This group right here is considered a capturing group and it's going to output the values of the groups. So in this case it's the 4 right, and the 9 for this one. So now if you do it with search, okay so we have re.search um, and this does the same thing. So re.search when we access the groups uh, method what re.search is going to do is it's going to it's going to access the values of the groups. So let me just run this and as you can see here, the four is the value of the of one of the groups. But in this case, there's only one group, so the four represents the value of that group. So these uh, capturing groups are actually uh, outputting. You're able to access these values within this captured group. So with find all, when you run find all, you automatically output the captured group's values. And with uh, re.search, you have to actually uh, use the group method to access the captured group's values. However, there are times when we want to use a group to find a pattern, but we don't necessarily want to output the group's result or we don't want to uh, capture the result. We just want to use the group as a way to find a, a portion of the pattern, but we don't want to output or save the group's result. Uh, this was evident by our previous videos where we wanted to use find all to pull out the entire match, but we had to uh, resolve to tuple slicing many times. So for when we want to use the, the group as part of our regular expression pattern, but we don't necessarily want to capture, or in this case, output the group's content, for that purpose, we have something called a non-capture groups. Now, the syntax, um, I want you to pay attention to the syntax. So this, this is the syntax for non-capture groups. And it looks slightly similar to the syntax for naming groups. So this is for naming groups. It's a large P. And this one's using colon. Pay attention to the syntax because there's actually other syntax that looks very similar to what you're looking at right now. So I want you guys to memorize some of these syntax because it's going to get very confusing once uh, we get sort of long patterns of regular expression. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use uh, this uh, non-capturing syntax. So okay, so this was our previous example, um, re.findAll, and if we run this we pull out of course the 4 and the 9 because this is a caption group and find all always outputs the uh, captures values. Now here is a non caption group. So we have a group and we have the uh, regular expression of the group, but we prepend the group with this uh, syntax. So this was the syntax that I explained just a little while ago, or just a, just a couple of seconds ago. And this is the syntax that that lets us know, or lets uh, Python know as well, that this is um, a non-capturing group. So question mark colon is the syntax for a non-capturing group, and you prepend the regular expression within the group. So our regular expression is just this. We prepend it with this uh, uh, question mark colon, and this turns this group into a non-capturing group. So now let's just run this and see what happens. So instead of just pulling out the, uh, the uh, final value of the group, we're actually able to pull out the entire string or pattern. So, um, so instead, of, instead of just pulling out the four, which is the final value of the group, final group value, or the nine, which is the final group value, 
we're actually pulling out the entire pattern here. Now, the one thing I want you guys to realize is that we're actually using the quantifier on the group, but we're actually not outputting the, the group value or storing the group value. So we're able to use uh, quantifiers on group without actually having to output the group value or store the group value. Now, in this case, I want you to just uh, realize we're using re.findAll. So when re.findAll doesn't have a group that outputs anything, what re.findAll does is it outputs the entire string. Yeah, so that's the uh, nuance. We went over this uh, in earlier videos. re.findAll is going to output the entire uh, pattern. Sorry, not string, entire pattern. So in, in this case, uh, we were just printing out the group's value, this above case here. But now that we've uh, made this group non-capturing, there is actually no value that the group is holding onto. So in that case, what happens is we print out the entire regular expression, unless there's another group. If there was another group, we would output the other group. So let's just actually test that out. So yeah, oops. All right, so let's just test this out. So this should, if we run this, as you can see, the four in line, because in this case, we're just outputting this group's value, and this is not a non-capturing group. So just remember, when we use re.findAll, it's going to print out a group's value, or output a group's value, but if we have all non-capturing groups, it's gonna output the entire uh, match. We've went over this a few times already in the previous videos. All right, and just to reiterate my point, actually I could just uh, get rid of this to simplify things. But this is essentially the same thing as this. The output is just as if we didn't have any brackets. And if I run this, we get the uh, same output. Now you might be wondering, what, what's the need for uh, brackets? Well, when we use more complicated patterns, we're going to need groups, especially when we want to use quantifiers in groups. So essentially, we can use groups as part of a regular pattern uh, a regular expression pattern, but we don't necessarily need to have those groups output anything or store anything. Now, I think, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go over a couple of more examples now. So in this example, um, we have a string, right? We have this long string. So it's pretty much uh, a series of numbers equals a name. Series of numbers equals a name. So let's just think of these series of numbers as, as an ID. So we have series of numbers equals a name, series of numbers equals a name, um, and so on. So now, say that we wanted to pull all names whose IDs have one, two, three within it. Yeah. So you wanted to pull out all the names who have um, either one case or a multiple case of one, two, threes. But we just wanted to pull out the names. Say we wanted to pull out the names. So in this case, the names we want to pull out. So Alex has a, a one, two, three as an ID. So this fits the criteria. Danny fits the criteria. Uh, Mike fits the criteria. Uh, Rick does not fit the criteria. And John does not fit the criteria. And I think that's it. So, um, yeah, actually I could just uh, add one more. Let's see, like something like one, three, two, one, three, two equals uh, Mike. And just for uh, consistency, we can just uh, add this uh, comma. So I'll just make it a little easier. So, all right, so this is the string. Now let's take a look at the regular expression. So essentially what this is doing is it's looking for so this is our regular expression, one, two, three, and we're looking for multiple instances of that group, but we're making a non-capture group. So we don't want this to output. We're just using this group to find what we're looking for. We have this group, multiple instances, equals, and then it's gonna equal to um, some alphanumeric characters, which in our case is just a name. So it's gonna grab the name. And since we're making the name itself a group, what we're doing is um, we're going to be outputting this group itself. So this group we're just using to be able to find the information we're looking for, and then we're actually outputting the names, which is what we want. So let me run this. So this should pull out Alex, Danny, and Mike. If I run this, we get Alex, Danny, and Mike. Okay, so uh, upon reviewing the video, I realized I used Mike twice. So in this case, it wasn't the best example. So what I'm going to do is just to uh, make sure you guys are uh, convinced. I will change this name to something like uh, Luis. So I'll change this to Luis. Things in caps lock. All right, all right. So I change this to Luis, and if I run this, um, the mic that we're pulling out is actually 
uh, the same mic, actually the first mic. So let me just run this again. Um, and then we'll run this. All right, I find all. Okay, so if I run it again with the name Luis, uh, it still pulls out the mic. So this is just, uh, this is a very contrived example, um, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how we can use uh, non-capturing groups. Now there's uh, another contrived example that I came up with. Uh, these are just a series of numbers, but we want to pull out numbers, uh, one followed by an asterisk. So the pattern we're looking for is one followed by an asterisk, but we want to pull out all the sets or all the items which have at least two one followed by asterisk sets. So this one followed by an asterisk, one followed by an asterisk is the pattern we're looking for. And we're looking for a two or more. So in this case, it has to be at least two or more. Remember, uh, these, are, these are quantifiers, so this is a minimum of two. So we're looking for at least two or more. So this will satisfy it, this will satisfy it, this won't satisfy it because we're looking for uh, two or more in order. So they have to be consecutive. Uh, this won't satisfy it and this won't satisfy it. Now if we take a look at this regular expression, um, this is a non-capture group and we don't have any other groups. So, and we're using re.findall, so we're going, to actually, we're going to actually print out the entire pattern. So, yeah, and this portion is just looking for uh, a number and many instances of that number. So let's run this, but before, before we run this, I'm expecting to pull out this and this. So let's just run this and we get nothing. Oh, the reason why we got number, <laughs> I forgot to run this string. Okay, let me run this string and let me run this. Okay, here we go. So we get the two instances that I expected. So this is pretty much an overview of non-capturing groups. Now, we've been using examples with re.findall. So I want to show you that it also affects uh, search and match. Remember, when we use match, it automatically prints out the entire uh, string. But if you want to access the groups, we have the groups method. So this is the string, uh, one, two, three, four. So this is the same example we used uh, just a earlier. And we're using a non-capturing group, so let's just uh, print out the group. So in this case, since we're using a non-capturing group, our groups should actually return nothing. Um, so if I run this, it returns an empty group. So this is correct. And, okay, so this is incorrect syntax. Okay, the one thing I want you guys to be careful of is the syntax. So Remember, it's a question mark followed by a colon. So it's a question mark followed by a colon. However, if you use a colon followed by a question mark, this group is actually going to run normally. So this uh, regular expression is going to run normally, but the only thing is it's going to capture. It's going to be a capturing group. So in this case, we're going to capture the four. It seems like our code is working, but we made a fatal mistake here. So this mistake is very hard to catch because it's not throwing up an exception or any uh, sort of errors. So you have to be very careful um, using the correct syntax. The wrong syntax will not affect the code or will not affect the, uh, the Python code from uh, compiling and running it. And you'll get an output, but it's just not the output you, are, uh, you desire. So be very careful with that. Okay, now uh, just a quick summary. When we use capture groups, we're either storing the value or outputting them. And when we use non-capture groups, we are um, not storing the value or outputting them. We're just using them as part of the pattern. All right, so that was pretty good. Okay, so now let's get into back references. All right, so now that we have an understanding of non-capturing groups and capturing groups, back referencing will be a little easier to explain. So when you capture a group, remember the group's value is being stored. What back referencing does, it's making a reference to that stored value uh, within the same regular expression. So say I have a regular expression and I make a group, right? Group number one. What back referencing does is you could actually refer to that group number one within that uh, regular expression that you actually created that group number one. Okay, so let's just uh, go through an example. This one, so this backslash one is actually the, the syntax to refer to a group. So this is an example of back referencing. So we're creating a group here, right? So this is the group, and this backslash one is re referencing to this group. So this backslash is, a, is an escape character, so it's essentially creating a meta character. So this is a meta character, and we are referencing the, uh, the group that we just created within this regular expression. So if you uh, take a closer look at this code, we're looking for 
a bunch of uh, characters, then a space, uh, then we're looking for the same bunch of characters within this group. So we're looking for a bunch of characters, a space, and then we are actually looking for the same bunch of characters within this group. So back referencing is very useful to find duplicated words. So in our case, this uh, regular expression is going to pull out Mary and then Mary again because we're uh, looking for a word and then that word repeated one more time. So in our case, Mary space Mary. The word space the word. So word one space word one. So this is word one space word one. In this case, it doesn't fit this portion because these are two different words. So let me just run this. And as you can see, the match is Mary Mary. And if we, uh, we can just copy this and run groups to see what uh, what groups we pull out. Let's just get rid of that. Group. So, and Mary is the group value, which is located within this group. Okay. So, just to reiterate, uh, backslash one is just referencing the first group. So, we could actually have multiple groups and we reference them by number. So, if we had three groups, we would use uh, backslash one, backslash two, backslash three. So, depending on which group we want to back reference, would either use backslash one, backslash two, or backslash three. Um, so now we have another example. So this is just uh, the same example, but we're going to use re.findall. Okay. So re.findall is looking for a bunch of words, right? So this group is going to capture a bunch of words, then it's looking for the same bunch of words. So we're looking for a repetition of words. So if we look through this uh, string, uh, this and this satisfy that condition. This and this don't satisfy it. Then we uh, go a little further. Merry Christmas doesn't satisfy it, but Christmas Christmas satisfies this condition. So if I run this, we should uh, be pulling out Happy and Christmas because remember, we are only pulling out the group's output. We're not pulling out this output. Find all only pulls out the group's output. So we should be getting one instance of Happy and one instance of uh, Christmas. So Happy and Christmas. Okay. So I have another example, a very similar example. So we actually have three sets of duplicate words next to each other. And it's actually going to cycle through each word and find the uh, duplication. So it doesn't matter that they're all bunched together. It's going to be able to find it. And if I run this, um, as you can see, it pulls out Merry Christmas Merry. So Merry Christmas and then Merry. So yeah, so that's just a, a brief overview of back referencing and using non-capture groups. Yeah, so there's still a, a few more things I want to go over with groups. Things might get a little complicated from now with look arounds and looking forward and looking backwards, negative looking forward and negative looking backwards. So there's a few more things I want to go over groups. I also want to go over a bunch of examples uh, once we get some of the other methods down. So we still have flags, um, substitutions, splits, and some group stuff that I want to go over. And then once we have all these tools, we can start trying to take on some problems. All right, so that's it for this video. I will see you guys next time.